Hello and welcome to our Messy Church Facebook Live. Um, I am broadcasting to you from a very sunny morning here in London. Um, it's lovely to, to see. We'd love to know where you're tuning in from today. So do put uh, a hello in the chat and uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, we'd love to know that. Um, I'm really excited this morning because we are going to be having an interview with the Bin Twinning team. Um, it's, it's really, uh, this week we've had um, go up on our website, a Messy Church session based on Bin Twinning. And we're going to be talking through that and some ways that you might be able to use that in your Messy Church. Um, so that's coming up very shortly. But it's always good to start by just pausing uh, and we want to just reflect and I'm going to, uh, I've lit, lit a candle already um, to help me focus on our session this morning. I'm going to leave that there. You might want to do the same uh, where you are to help you focus as well. So I'm going to pray for us uh, before our session today. So Heavenly Lord, I just thank you uh, for this opportunity this morning to hear from the Bin Twinning team. Lord, I thank you for your amazing and beautiful creation. And uh, as we talk to our session today, I really pray, help us all to think how we can better look after your amazing world that you have given us. Amen. Fabulous. So I'm going to invite uh, Laura to join us now. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. Hi, um, nice to be with you. And Laura, where are you tuning in from today? I am from the slightly less sunny Glasgow, calling in from Glasgow up in Scotland today. Fabulous. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and who you work for? Sure. So thanks so much for having us on. I'm really excited about our chat this morning. My name is Laura and I work for Bin Twinning, which is an amazing um, environmental charity helping to support recycling and waste and sustainable startups all around the world. A bit about me, I love the planet. I am a total environmental campaigner. I'm an environmental scientist. And for the last two years, I've been working with Bin Twinning, helping out with loads of different things. But one big part has been helping out with their social media, connecting with people online and helping create some really cool resources like our skills resources and now a messy church resource, which I'm so excited is live. And so that's a little bit about me. Fabulous. Thank you. Do you know what? I forgot to introduce myself. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Ica, Ica Kenneth Brown, and I am the Messy Church Ministry Lead. But I'm hoping that most of you knew that already. Fabulous. Um, so I know that some people watching may have heard of a similar project by Tier Fund called Toilet Twinning. Um, you, we previously, a number of years ago, had a Messy Church session on Toilet Twinning. Um, if you've done the toilet twinning session and you're watching now, please do put that in the chat. Um, we'd love to know uh, which toilets you ended up twinning with. Uh, but um, can you just talk us through a little bit about the issue that uh, the bin twinning campaign is highlighting? Of course. So for anyone who knows about toilet twinning, you'll know that money that's raised through twinning toilets, which is always such a funny thing to do, but also so important, goes towards supporting water um, projects and sanitation projects. But another big problem around the world is the problem of waste, waste management, environmental pollution. Obviously, loads of that comes from plastic and our awareness has been growing and the impacts of plastic pollution, mismanaged waste all around the world. And so bin twinning is the same idea, which is a way to raise money to support sustainable startups all around the world. We've got seven partners that bin twinning works with in seven different countries. And it's because there is a big problem around the world with waste and plastic. Now, we might be sitting here thinking, well, my bins get collected every week or two weeks or three weeks, but actually around the world, two billion people don't have their rubbish collected in any kind of way. That is a lot of people with not a lot of waste management. Mm -hmm. And actually this can have not just a huge impact on the environment. We all have seen Blue Planet and lots of documentaries like that. Mm -hmm. But also when waste is mismanaged, maybe it's dumped illegally or it's burned, it can have a really big impact on people's health. And actually, in developing countries, a person dies every 30 seconds from diseases 
caused by plastic pollution and rubbish. And that's a huge issue. And we really want to find a way to provide solutions to that. And that's what our partners are doing. And so we are really trying to combat this issue of plastic pollution and waste and and bring loads of great solutions through our partners. And it's because it's such an important issue. And I know one that so many people are passionate about, especially since our awareness has been raised. Loads of people are passionate about cleaning up the earth and making sure everyone has their waste collected and can enjoy a safe environment. So that is a little bit of kind of what bin twinning is about and the problem that we are trying to solve. Okay, so can you just describe for me now the the fundraising ask of this campaign? What happens, for example, if your your messy church decides to raise money for bin twinning and they might raise 45, 50 pounds? What would that go towards? Well, if you were to raise £45, you get to twin a bin, which is so exciting. And so you get to pick which bin you would like to twin. You can twin an inside bin, so like a food compost bin if you've got one at home, or an outside wheelie bin. And you can go onto our website and you can put in which partner you would like the sticker to have on it. You can put it on your bin and then you get to show off your lovely bin when it goes out for collection to say that it has been twinned with a sustainable initiative around the world that is helping people to recycle and have their waste collected and yeah you can twin everything from your home bin your work bin schools bin churches bin that it is really endless but that is exactly what it does it just helps put that sign on say Mm. I have supported another initiative around the world and because we're so lucky um, and blessed to have waste collection here that I'm going to support a startup around the world somewhere um, and show off to hopefully get other people thinking about it as well. Thank you. I know um, a number of years ago when the toilet twinning session was out, my messy church at the time we raised money. Um, I think a number of uh, young people got into a bar for baked beans uh, oh. and uh, that raised the money. And we were able to twin all the different toilets in our church with um, projects uh, in other parts of the world. But I guess this is, you know, you could do this in schools as well. You could twin bins at schools, not just in your home, your your church. The If your messy church meets in uh, like a community hall, you might be able to twin the bins there and really raise awareness for other users of that, that shared space. Um, Laura, could you tell us a little bit about uh, which parts of the world? You mentioned you're, you're in seven different projects. Could you tell us just a little bit about which parts of the world you're um, working with? And maybe uh, is there a particular story from, from one of them you could share with us? Okay, here we go. So this is always the test, isn't it? Let's see if I can count them out. So we've got Haiti, Uganda, Nigeria, Nepal, Pakistan, the DRC and Bangladesh. That's seven. Okay, I've got them all. And so we work in these different communities around the world and each partner looks completely different because they are meeting the needs of the community that is there and finding solutions that the problems um, that they have. And often that means waste collection, um, recycling where there's never been recycling before, or really cool initiatives um, to try and bring solutions to some of the projects. But I guess one that um, really always sticks with me is we have a partner in Uganda and they are called EcoBricks. And maybe by the name, you can already guess what they do. But one of the things that they manage to do is take plastic, plastic that's just polluting, that's in the environment, and they um, manage to get waste pickers employed to come and collect all of this plastic. And they bring it in to their HQ and then they turn it into new products and they have brought recycling to areas that never had it before and by the name you can tell that they make bricks so paving bricks things that you can use for construction but they've also been able to make kind of cool things like fence posts display boxes and also in the last couple of years they've managed to take this recycled plastic and turn it into uh, face shields for face masks and to kind of protect from COVID and also they made some earrings Mm. at one point so they're really looking at creative solutions Mm. to take this and because of lots of support over the last few years they are now able to recycle 10 tonnes of plastic a month which is just phenomenal when you think of how much that looks like and that's all stuff that's been collected from local people who are getting a wage from this and then recycled into some great projects. So EcoBricks is, is always a great one to see what they're doing and just to see how much they are growing just from the support that, that they've been getting over the last few years. That's amazing. And I, I know in 
in those parts of the world, often people are much more reliant on sort of bottled plastic, uh, bottled water, because water supplies aren't necessarily clean to drink as well. And so it must be really hard when you're more dependent on certain plastic items that come in plastic and then not have the, the recycling facilities later that we do uh, enjoy in this country. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And one of the things that we often forget is um, if you were to not have your bins collected, what would you do with that rubbish? Maybe you mm. would put it to a side of where you live and and suddenly a, a kind of landfill would appear. But often that can gather up water, which is a big breeding ground for mosquitoes, which can cause malaria to suddenly become prevalent. Or maybe you might think, let's burn it, let's get rid of it. But then that can release really toxic chemicals into the environment and have impact on health. So this recycling is not just something that's great for the environment. It's cleaning up the local area. It's also really helping with people's health to keep the air clean and to keep um, people from getting unwell due to mismanaged waste and so it's just such a great solution and it's something that I guess is a simple innovation but it has such a big impacts um, in these communities. Thank you. So am I right in thinking that bin twinning is sort of a subsidiary of tier fund? We are and tier fund for the last few years has been doing so much campaigning around Mm -hmm. environmental issues and the links that that has to communities all around the world. You might remember that we had our rubbish campaign, which I think Mm -hmm. is just the best name ever for a campaign. But that was really looking at the impact of the biggest plastic producers all around the world and the impact that their products are having on communities and the impact that that has on people's health and the environment. And after this amazing campaigning work, we realised that there are so many different projects happening Mm. that would just be amazing to support. So the seven that we've picked, and and there's loads more around the world, but we've got these seven. And actually, it's just something that we've highlighted as a huge issue for all the projects that that we've been working with is waste and, and the kind of plastic pollution problem. And so it was great to be able to, a couple of years ago, create bin twinning um, and be able to really put a lot of effort into raising money for these partner projects. And I know that TFUN did that research project, Burning the House Down, where they interviewed a lot of young people about their views on climate change and climate justice as well. And if you've not read that research, it's really important uh, to, to listen to the young people of our country and their views on what they think the church should be doing about it. And I think one of the key findings there was that, um, yes, they are uh, passionate about climate justice, but also they felt as though their churches were leaving it up to them to do something about it, but they needed help from adults and the rest of the church to to make the changes needed. Um, And um, Laura, Tear Fund is is a Christian charity, and I was just wondering if you could just talk through a bit of the theological thinking about why we should be concerned with rubbish in the first place. Yeah, of course. I mean, I remember being a bit younger myself and and thinking about this and and trying to navigate it. And I remember asking my minister, is plastic in the Bible? Does it talk about plastic? Did did they have plastic back then? And of course, we know that plastic and and waste is is quite a new phenomenon. You know, it's nowadays that we've got all of this stuff that's single use and disposable. So the Bible doesn't necessarily talk about plastic, but the Bible does talk about caring for creation, being responsible for looking after it, and loving our neighbours, being aware of what's impacting them and, and finding out how we can help and play our part. And actually, if you were to take the Bible and open it and just start reading, the first story that you come across is Genesis chapter one, the story of creation. And you hear about how God creates this world that we get to live in and doesn't just think it's good, but very good. Um, and you know that we are given responsibility to, to care for it, to tend for it, to look after it. And I think if you look around, you see some of the images of pollution and, and some of the problems that we have, you know that we're not taking care of it mm-hmm. right now. So, so we need to really be um, getting our act together and, and sorting it out. But also we're called to love our neighbour and to really go after a world that is fair and is just. And when we see people living amongst waste or being impacted by burning waste or by lots of plastic coming into their countries when they don't have the waste management, we know that we need to do something about it. So we can campaign, we can sign petitions, but we can also 
fundraise to support initiatives that mean that they can have um, the same kind of waste management that we do, the same innovative solutions um, and work out of waste management. And so the Bible really teaches us that and it teaches us to do that. But there is a bit of a, a job for us to do. You know, we need to be talking a lot more about this. When I was younger, creation care, as we now know it, and climate change was not something that was spoken about in my church. But I know that we've been on a journey with this as well. We started thinking about plastic. And so we started thinking, what are the plastic items that are in our church that we can get rid of? And we started with the plastic coffee cups after the services and then encouraged people to bring their own mugs. And ever since that one decision to be conscious about the environment, we have started to think about all of the changes that we can make to be more sustainable, putting in more bike racks. We planted a little orchard on some of the green space that we have. We've been getting the kids to get involved in different eco activities. And we actually have now twinned our bins at the church. So that's, you know, really exciting that we've managed to do that as well. But actually, as you said, it's something that loads of people are passionate about but particularly young people. Um, and I'll just tell you one story, I guess, to kind of highlight this because I was speaking at my church a few months ago and I was doing the kind of kids address in the morning and we were talking about plastic and plastic pollution. First of all, all the kids knew way more than I ever could. They are so clued up about all of this. But there was this little girl that came running up to the front and she said, oh, I want to tell you a story. And of course, in those situations, you're just like, here we go. This will be a laugh. On you go. But actually, she told us a story about how her and her family go to different bits of Scotland on holiday and they went to one of the beach locations that we have, beautiful beach places in Scotland. And she said, every single time me and my family go on holiday, we always make sure to bring a big bucket to collect bits of litter when we're on our way and we do little litter picks to make sure that we are cleaning up the beaches. And she was only about four or five. And everyone sort of said, oh, isn't that so lovely? But actually my heart sunk. And I thought when I was four and five, I wasn't having to clean up the beach on my holiday. And when my parents and my grandparents were four and five, they certainly weren't doing that either. So it's definitely something that young people mm. are growing up around. And so when we hear about other places around the world that have similar situations with waste and pollution, I think young people feel passionate because they know what it feels like to grow up in a world that is changing, whether it's with climate or environmental issues. And so getting our churches to preach about this, take on challenges like messy church bin twinning, look at ways that we can clean up our local um, environments, but also support world initiatives is always a great thing. It's interesting though, because you talk about loving your neighbour, and I don't think people, we don't always necessarily think that uh, we live in this global world, and actually our neighbours are now global, not just the people that we live next door to or the people in our local community. Uh, and I, I can see that Tiz has put in the, the comments that... Um, it's a really good way to engage young people when you highlight the needs of, and how to be good neighbours for both locally and globally. Uh, so thanks for that comment, Tiz. Um, and I mean, this, this message really ties into uh, our Messy Church Goes Wild project that we have going in at Messy Church at the moment. Uh, for those of you who've not heard of Messy Church Goes Wild, although we've been talking about it for a number of months now, it is the movement within Messy Church that uh, encourages us to go step outside and encounter God through nature. And also it prompts us to start thinking about being a bit more eco-aware. So even if you're not going outside with your messy church, how can you make your messy church a little bit more eco-aware, a bit more sustainable? And how do we go about caring for creation? And uh, which brings us nicely on to why we've partnered with uh, the Bin Twinning team to produce a messy church Bin Twinning session. As I said earlier, it's now available to download off the website and it, it looks like a standard message church um, session and there are some 10 suggested activities and it gives you ideas of how you can talk about God and care of creation through those activities. Uh, and there are also some suggestions for a celebration, some songs, a story and the meal. Um, now, Laura, I would... Let's, ha let's have a look at that session. Have you got a couple of activities that you particularly enjoy from this se session? Have you got a personal favourite? 
Oh, I do. I've got three. I'm going to tell you the three okay. because they're, they're very different. But actually, I had so much fun creating this resource because I realized just how many activities there are that can not only just be fun and creative, but also um, saved quite a lot of waste around my house. So it was good fun. So the first one is I find that I always have lots of charity T-shirts, whether it's fun runs that you do or um, Sunday school activities and you get a T-shirt and often they just become pajama T-shirts. That's what they become for me. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, there's an activity in the pack where you can take a classic t-shirt so maybe it's a charity t-shirt you've got somewhere or an old t-shirt that doesn't fit and you can just with some scissors and some tying of knots turn it into a tote bag a reusable tote bag that you can take to the shops um, and that you can repurpose and I found that so helpful and so I turned a few t-shirts into bags which is really really great I also loved the eco brick shoe bowling and that's because this is my favorite game in the world I always do it when I go to youth groups so shoe bowling is simply the idea of you have something in the middle of the room a chair at either end and you have two teams you number them and they have to run to the chair and throw their shoe at the thing in the middle and you count up the points and it's very competitive but instead of just having a thing in the middle you can make an eco brick which is a big plastic bottle stuffed full of unrecyclable plastic wrappers and you Mm. poke it in and poke it in and poke it in and it makes this big brick that's very very solid and perfect for shoe bowling so that's a great activity that you can teach kids about you know recycling and packaging Mm. but also create something that can be used as a game and I made mine years ago and I still just keep using the same one which is great But then the other thing is I love making many greenhouses from plastic bottles. And there's a great photo um, in the resource from one that I actually made last year. And you take the bottom off of a big plastic bottle and you can put some seedlings in there. If it's coming up to winter at this time of year, you can maybe just put some cress or something that doesn't need too much heat. But if you're doing it in the spring, summertime, you can be really adventurous with what you go for because it really does create it quite um, hot. And last year when I did this, I made mine with cucumber seedlings. And I mm-hmm. got a bumper crop. I was eating cucumber for weeks. I was giving out cucumbers to the whole street. And so it's also just a great way to be able to do a little bit of gardening, even in a really small space in your home. Um, and it was just such an exciting thing. So those are my, the tote bag, the eco brick bowling and the plastic mini greenhouses were fantastic. Brilliant. I, I love the idea of the eco brick where you get to use, because even in our recycling, there are loads of plastic, sort of the film of uh cartons and things like that you can't recycle yet so I really like the idea of being able to use some of those plastics that uh, we can't currently recycle uh, and create something fun with it so that's brilliant um Laura hospitality is a real key area of messy church and we encourage messy churches to um provide a meal where they can um uh have you got any top tips about how messy churches could be a bit more eco aware in how we do our hospitality I was thinking particularly in the area of food waste. We never know how many people are going to show up to a messy church. Uh, so there, there's always this fear of either under catering or over catering. Uh, what, what can we be doing if we over cater? Well, it's always just to think creatively about maybe the ingredients or things that you have left over. And sometimes you can think about, I'm going to plan a meal to make sure that if there are leftovers, we can do something with them. And so my biggest tip is the three S's. So that is soup, smoothies and sauces, because loads of the food things that we have left over can be turned into a soup, a smoothie or a sauce. So that might be bits of fruits and vegetables um, that can be blended up and blitzed up and turned into something new after your messy church. So if you've got little bits left over, you can plan it out. But one of the things is also just to have a search online. You know, if you've got loads of bread left over, maybe you were doing sandwiches or you were doing soup with bread, think of some creative ways that you could take that leftover and turn it into croutons or bread and butter pudding or whatever it might be and just think about some of the ingredients that you have have a look around there's some amazing recipes if you just look up a um, food waste recipe with 
and then put in something. You will be amazed by how much that you get. But definitely the three S's, soup, smoothies and sauces have always been a great thing for me for the little bits and pieces that always get left over. Lots of fruit platters sometimes have things left over or if you've got, you know, dips and, and kind of vegetable sticks and all sorts, you can you can bung them into an amazing soup. And those would be my definite recommendations for that. Thank you. I know with um, you know we're seeing rising food costs at the moment and cost of living and fuel and stuff are going up. It's really important that we are good stewards of our food as well. I know um, in some of the messy churches I've visited, uh, they'll make available sort of uh, takeaway uh, sort of doggy bag food parcels, and they have them available for anybody to take. Uh, but we do know that those families who really need it. Uh, um, do often use that as an opportunity to take extras home with them as well. So that's something to be really mindful of as we go into this autumn as well, uh, about you know, if there's some food poverty happening in your particular area. But to be very um, gracious and include everybody in the giveaway so it doesn't embarrass those who really need it. I think that's quite important. Um, so... Just my final question for you this morning, Laura. Um, if you've got a messy church or a family that is just starting on this journey of being a little bit more eco-aware, um, what's your top tip for getting started? Because we sort of know what we should all be doing, but it all can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming. And, and where, where could we start? I've got a great tip and it's something that I did a few years ago, which really helped me think about it. And it's to do a waste audit, which sounds super boring, but actually it's really helpful. So what I did when I started to think about living sustainably and, and making swaps was I decided to say, well, what is the waste that I am producing? So for, I think it was between a fortnight and a month, I just collected all of my waste. Even if I was out and about, I'd bring it home to collect it. And after about a month, I kind of put it all out on my kitchen floor, kind of spread it all around and said, what's actually here? What am I using? And how can I target the way that I try and reduce my waste? The first time I did this, I was in my final year of uni. And the biggest thing I was doing was buying lots of meal deals. And I was having lots of lunches out from cafes. So actually about 50% of my waste was from lunches on the go. So I said, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to focus on trying to make my own packed lunches, take my own tubs to cafes, get my own coffee cup to avoid those coffee cups and try and work out how to do that. And after a few weeks, I thought, wow, this is great. My waste is really going down. Then I did it again and started looking at the other items that made up lots of my waste. And as I did that, I did it really targetedly. So I could say, actually, this is reducing my waste, um, you know, massively because I'm, I'm doing it in a strategic way. But it also meant I was doing it one by one. So as I came across an item, I had the time to say, what's the better alternative? How can I look nice. into that? And it's different for everyone. So when I had this conversation with my grandparents, they were like, oh, we're old. We don't go walking with coffee. We like to sit in cafes and, and have it from a china mug. So when they did it, their waste was totally different and they could target different items. In the same way, I had um, some friends who had just had a newborn baby. So most of their waste was related to this new, brilliant member of the family. But then they could think differently about how they could make some tweaks and changes there. So everybody's waste is unique, but we can all find little tweaks and research into the little items. So as a family or as a church or as a community group, you can do this. You can look at the items that you produce and say, OK, let's target this one. Let's find a really good solution and work on that. And then once we've got that one down, we'll move on to the next one. And it's great because after a few years, you hardly need to take out your bin because you found all these great new ways of doing things. Um, but also you encourage other people to do it as well. Maybe that's a challenge for messy churches, actually, to do a, a, an audit of maybe the crafts that you're coming up with and uh, are there any more sustainable or natural resources that you could use instead um so yes yeah, so that's quite a challenge actually i have to say if i did that in my household laura i've had sort of seven people living in my household this summer and um, we'd have an awful lot of rubbish in just one week yeah uh, so i'm not sure i could collect my whole rubbish for an entire month but maybe for a week and we would go through what what we've been using um that might be more appropriate for my situation um, Laura, thank you so much uh, for giving us some of your top tips and for talking us through the, the Messy Church bin twinning session. It's been really, really great to hear from you. And thank you so much for helping to develop the material. Um, it's time for us to finish. 
now. And um, before I finish in the final prayer, I've just got a couple of notices. Um, for those of you who would like to um, experience Messy Church Goes Wild, we've got a couple of road shows this autumn. We're visiting Gloucester Diocese just a week on Saturday. Um, uh, but in, we're going to Horn Church, which is just on the edge of London, uh, sort of Essex, uh, on the 15th of October. And we're, we're doing a session for Messy Church leaders. If you've got children, do bring them along with you. But it's mainly aimed at Messy Church leaders and young leaders. We'll be walking you through one of our uh, Messy Church Goes Wild and New Messy Adventures sessions to help give you a bit of confidence about being able to take your messy church outside. So that's available to book now on the website. So please, please do that. Uh, and our next Facebook Live will be on Wednesday, the 5th of October. We're trying to aim for the first Wednesday of the month. So do make a note of that in your diaries. Um, let's. It's time for us to finish. So let's just, just finish with a prayer. Heavenly Lord, I just thank you for Laura and I thank you for the Bin Twinning team. And we thank you for all their partners that they're working with overseas. Um, Lord, we really pray uh, for your blessing um, on this project. We really pray that uh, churches and messy churches up and down the country will take on the challenge to twin their bins. Households will twin their bins. Schools might twin their bins and be able to raise money. Uh, to help support our neighbours around the world. And Lord, we thank you for your amazing and beautiful planet. And we really, we, we want to say sorry when we haven't looked after it. Uh, so prompt us and show us the next step of where we can uh, move forward to care better for the beautiful world that you've given us. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Laura and I will be back tonight uh, for those of you who can tune in at a different time of day. But other than that, I hope you go well in your day today. Bye. I'm pretty sure. We're off air now because the message has been.